Welcome to Hanging Out with Robert, that's me. This video contains things that I encounter throughout the day. If for some reason I complete a task and you would like to see the details, you can click on the link in the description area below. This video also contains tips and tricks that I learned throughout the years. I plan on leaving this video accessible for about 30 days. After that, you can view it through my Patreon account. Thank you very much for watching. Kicked off the day rougher than expected. My right eye is messed up somehow. Well, they said it has an abrasion on it. Kind of like if you fell and skin your knee or something. But man, it is super sensitive to light. I couldn't even look at my phone this morning when I woke up. Struggled with it for a few hours, went to the ER. That's when they told me it had an abrasion on it. And that abrasion was causing irritation and sensitivity to light. Gave me some salve to put on it. So anyway, it's 545. I'm just getting out here to tinker. Yesterday, went to the junkyard. Uh, trap my contraption to test my little temp fans that didn't work so I bought several motors those uh, Blendor motors I was able to test the temp fan sensors that go by the hand grips on the 850 with just straight 12 volts from my jump box that worked out so I got some of those tested I hope I got my jump box. Yeah, I see it back there. So now I'm going to try to test these Blendor motors. I was testing them at this location. I'm going to try to test them this time at the recycle location. So, I don't know why my testing equipment not working right on this thing. But anyway, I'm going to test that theory again and just unplug the recycle and test these six motors take back the ones that don't work and I got these things testing in different modes and they're moving a little bit by a little twicking back and forth with my recycle button so I guess they're working it's trying to calibrate itself I just took it to fresh air now I'm going to take it back to recycle. And it takes a while to move, but it does move. But I'm going to yeah, see how much that move. It's moving. I got three of them to do that so far. I got five good motors and one bad motor. So I'm going to take that one back to salvage art. Now I have to figure out why my central locking is not working on pants. I'm going to take the central locking relay out of Panther and put it over here on Queen B and see if it works over here on Queen B. In this video, I'm going to show you where the rear defrost relay is on the Volvo 850. You pull down this panel, you look up here on your relay control, and that dark orange relay is your rear defrost relay. I've never seen one go bad. Usually if you have a wagon and your rear defrost doesn't work, you have wires broken in your rear hatch wire harness. But if you need the relay, there it is. It's usually behind this 212 relay, which is a seatbelt reminder. And that relay is number 206. See 206 on top of it. If you have a Volvo 850 and your seat belt reminder always goes off, you may have a bad seat belt reminder relay. That usually happens when somebody replaces one of these sun visors and they cut the wires and short out the wires instead of separating the wires and disconnect them one by one. When you short out the wires by cutting both at one time, you often damage this relay down here and you go up under the panel it's that blue relay 212 seatbelt reminder relay. So you'll have to pull it out and replace that. Occasionally, you may have problems with your central locking not working with your remote or your alarm acting funny or something like that. Now, if you have a situation where your alarm is activating, it's usually because something in the system is messed up. Either... Uh, 
your trunk latch or one of your door latches one of those things is acting up is triggering your alarm now if your alarm is triggered you have to reset it get that alarm to reset and turn it off before you can pull this relay and deactivate the system as long as the alarm has been activated and your immobilizer is triggered you can't just pull this relay because it won't help you unless the relay is bad but if you want to deactivate the system you have to shut the system off before you pull this relay so with the system deactivated i'm going to show you where that relay is right now i cannot get my central locking working with my remote on panther so this relay may be bad i'm gonna swap it out to see but this is the location of the relay you remove this panel down here and you come under here look at the relay panel that large red relay 210 to 11 is your alarm relay i believe it also controls your central locking so i'm gonna pull that out see if my central locking still works and see if that's the problem on panther with this relay out the central locking still works with the remote control so this just probably controls the alarm it does not control the central locking if you look above where the anti-theft relay is there's another brown relay that one is labeled central locking relay so I'm going to pull that relay, let you know what the number on it is, so that you'll know which one controls the central locking. This brown relay here, let me cut the light off, is the central locking relay. It has 205, 206 on it. And this is found under the dash. You'll see that relay there, that white relay for the fog light. Above that relay is a relay number 210 to 11 that I removed, and that's for your anti theft. And then in the top socket next to that black relay, you'll find this relay for the central locking system. So I'm going to pull that on my other car and try it on this car to see if this central locking will work with the relay out of panther the relay out of panther does work in queen b man that relay is hard to get in and out so i'm gonna put the relay from queen b in panther now when i went to pull this relay out of panther the one that i actually pulled out of panther i did hear something happen with the central locking so the relay could be going bad. I'm gonna put the one out of Queen Bee in there, see if it works. Not sure if I mentioned it, but man, those guys did a heck of a job making this hood look good. And I really couldn't even find the location of the dents that they removed out of the top. I had a dent there, can't see it. I had a dent over there and a dent over here that me and Byron put in there, but, but they did a heck of a job. Now, I meant to take this blanket off before I dropped the car off down there. I see they had to do it, and it's like half the clips are missing. So, I need to get clips back on this. Now, as far as my central locking, fuse number 15. Let me cut this light off on my forehead here. I think it interfered with my filming. Uh, let me cut the camera light back on uh, missed it fuse number 15 courtesy lamp door warning lamps I think those work remote keyless entry glove compartment lamp I pulled this fuse and I've never seen a fuse look like this I don't know if it's blown or not I could hit it with the ohm meter check it that way but uh, maybe this fuse is blown. I'm going to hit it with the ohm meter. I don't have any 10 amps readily available right now. But let me hit this with the ohm meter. If not, I'll put a 15 in there to test my door locks. 
I don't like running fuses that are over the amp rating. According to my own meter, this uh, fuse is good. So I'm going to put it back and look for another fuse in this fuse panel. And if not, I'm going to try to reprogram my remote. Maybe some glitch in these wiring jumping things caused my remote to become unprogrammed. It's very rare that you can't lock or unlock the door with your remote. Usually one of the features quit working, not both. And my battery's testing good. So let me see if there's another fuse in here. Couldn't find any other fuse indicator. So I'm going to look at my video for programming a remote and see if I could program a remote on this thing. Still not sure what's going on with the remote on Panther. Fuses are good. The alarm works. I just can't get the keyless entry system work. I even swapped the relay from Queen Bee to Panther. My next test is going to be to replace the remote. Next up, I'm going to fix the wiring for my gauges. My air fuel ratio is getting power even in accessory. I only want that to have power when I'm in run. So I'm going to move that wire over to the run position. I need constant power to my boost gauges and my oil temp gauge so that it doesn't lose the color settings and then I need to give it the temporary power. So I need to correct that wiring because right now I'm losing power when I'm cranking and sometimes that changes the colors of my gauges. Corrected a couple wires under my dash for my gauges. Hopefully that's all fine. Hadn't figured out what's going on with the remote. I'll try a new remote. But as you can see, it's dark out. I'm going to call it a night. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter. And if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.